Hello again. Tonight I'm going to talk about Lake Simcoe, Whitefish, and Lakers. And what I use for tackle, what I use for rods, how I store my rods. I'll go through those things. For the Lakers and the Whitefish, I kind of use longer rods. I found that those were, especially for the bigger Lakers, that uh, you need to have a bigger rod to have a bit more play in the rod to uh, keep the rod or the fish on. So I'll go through the two rods that I kind of use and um, this is the bigger one. This is a Wright and McGill with a Daiwa braid as I'm usually fishing inside a hut so the ice isn't building up so bad. So that's the Wright and McGill and that's a 48 inch so it's pretty big with a pretty solid tip to set the hook for the Lakers. And uh, for the second rod, this one here is a 13 fishing 42 inch that I use. This is a thousand series reel. And this one is a 2500, depending on where I'm fishing. If I'm fishing deep, like over a hundred feet, you gotta have a bigger reel to hold more line. Because if, if the laker runs you don't want to get spooled right you lose all, all your rig with the thousand series you may not have the line capacity to do that and what i do because those are really big and bulky i have the it's just a, it's more or less for summertime but this is a summertime rod hold or travel pack and it holds both of those rods and reels comfortably and they uh, they don't get banged around a lot because you know the bigger rods I think they're a bit more expensive than the smaller ones so getting into uh, the business end of the uh, tackle side on uh, Simcoe. One of the things I kind of do is I use the MIGs. This is just one of them. And there's another one. And I put a tube on the end, back of it, like that. And when I fish it, I, you know, depending if it's muddy or rocky or sandy, I kind of bounce it on the bottom and then I just let it sit there. And the whitefish usually come up and suck it up. And you gotta kinda of watch your rod tip when that when you're doing that. Like if you're sitting there and and and, and the bait is kind of sitting on the ground, it's kind of sitting like this, a little bit of a bend in the rod. And with the whitefish sucking it up, it, the rod will go up, and then you gotta set the hook little trick I learned in the past so yeah that's the Meigs and the, and the little you know, white blue green tubes work this is the uh, the drifter with this a jig head on it it kind of does the same thing you know on the bottom bouncing off stuff that works as well for the Lakers I don't have a bigger tube on me but the tube tube in a jig works as well you know fishing it up the up the water column or not or on the bottom and you'll usually see it come in on the fish finder I usually put a stinger 
depending on the size of the skirt, I usually put a stinger that's sitting right here. And uh, as you might get a, you know, a short bite and uh, the, you'll still get it with the, with the stinger. Sometimes I go with the vertical body bait, I guess. This is a, what's this one? This is live target, but again, you want, you want the noise. Kind of draws in fish. That's one, you know, bring it up, bring it down, bring it up, bring it down. And you'll usually see something come into the screen on the, on your fish finder. This is another one that works out good too. It's just, I don't know who makes this particular one, but it's a minnow shape. And this might be even 13 fishing. That one works great too. So those are my five go-tos. And again, I talked about uh, how I organize my tackle. Oh, I even forgot, this is another one. Vibrato, the secret weapon. I didn't take it out, but I got a whole box of them. The one that actually I've used more often is this one here. And I think this is seven gram. See, I don't know, the whiteies like the little, the little bait. And I think this one is a shiner type one. And that works, you know. But you get it on the bottom, you know, two feet off the bottom. I don't know. It's light and uh, whitefish have no problem sucking that in. So uh, that, that's no secret. That's a Simcoe staple. That and the Meeks. So yeah, I uh, kind of put everything in these little boxes. This is another one I have. It's just called Lakers, right? This one doesn't have a label on it, but it's Lakers or Whiteys. So yeah, again, I put my name on all my stuff. My name, telephone number. If I drop it, hey, I might get it back. If you watch some of my older videos that I did a couple days ago, I actually got the, I got the, the stuff back. I lost an underwater camera a few years back and I got it back. The guy called me and said, hey, did you lose this? Some of the uh, soft pl plastics I use, no preference to me, but I've liked the set to hook stuff. They work great. Most times I uh, pick them up at the local taco shop around Simcoe, you know, support the local guys. They usually are stocked with the set to hook stuff, so. Yep, that's uh, kind of what I use for the Lakers and the Whitefish on Simcoe. Most of the time when I'm fishing for the Lakers or the Whitefish, I have Navionics on my phone. I have a Hummingbird Helix fish finder with mapping. I focus on shoals. That's the majority of where I hang out. And there's lots of them on Simcoe. You look at the maps, the underwater contours, you'll see some really nice shoals that, in some cases you'll have, you know, a city of ice huts on it. And I kind of stay away from those ones, but there's so many out there that you don't need to be, you know, 10 feet from somebody else. You can just, Fish another spot. There's lots of fish in Simcoe. Okay, that's it. I thought uh, I'd show my Lakers and Whiteys for Simcoe. And I hope it works out that uh, somebody watches it and, you know, learn something. Because I know a lot of guys have problems on, 
on uh, Simcoe to actually, you know, catch a fish out there, a laker or a white or a white fish. So, if it works, this video works for you. That'll be great. Thanks. Bye.